Hello there everyone and salutations, I'm your host Mr. Mocha Lover and welcome back to Old World Blues, A to Z series which we're playing as Lloyd's Ministry. Last time, we started off as the tiny Lloyd's Ministry, taking out uh, the Pioneer Company in Strath Commune and we're just about ready to beat the crap out of Big Grass. Actually, we already have, they're mostly dead already. Um, not a high casualty war, probably one of my lowest casualty wars ever, but... We're doing very well, and we want new weapons. Thanks to the tanker's newfound freedom to discuss their operations more openly. It soon emerged that one of the supply crates initially brought over by the Soviet advisors remains unopened, awaiting authorization that never came. Within were dozens of Kalashnikov rifles, fantastic rifles, rendered useless in combat by rust in the march of time. How sad. And yet their true value lies in their easily repl replicable architecture. Very true. Um, let's see... Uh, let's see, anything else we really want here that we really need immediately? Um, uh, Armix speaking. I do like that one. The sweet smell of gunpowder, even in a blast of wasteland such as this. There are resources, uh, that we can use. With the support of the workers, our tanks will be equipped with the highest quality ammunition we can provide. They shall be the sword that pierces the hearts of the enemies of the workers. As, I mean, at this point, I mean, we're, we have them pretty much all encircled and whatnot, and, and are beating the snot out of them, and, yeah, they'll be, they're done. Hey! We won! Tanker victory in Alberta! The chaos of an, uh, ooh, uh, engulfing central Alberta has finally been brought to an end, and with this, Terracy's strict party line appears to have been under undoing. The Canadian People's Front's secular ruling party in Strathcommune have been ousted by revolutionary splinters, with a new government established by the military exiles from Lloyd Minster to the east. Ekaterina Donskoya, its new leader, announced this victory in the address broadcast to all of Canada. Now, comrades, we have won just the first of many battles in the long struggle to come. A struggle for the heart of Canada. A struggle for the souls of the people. A struggle against the fascists that surround us. It is a revolution that we must fight on more fronts in the battlefield. We must feed the people, protect them from raiders, give them a chance to make a living. And we must educate them, most especially if they fail to see why our actions are necessary. The decadence of capitalism never stands ever strong. Its iron grip choking the working class. The people of Canada must be freed from its grasp. Thank you, comrade. Fantastic. And we have the followers coming here, too. That is cool. Um, I don't want to use that for political power. We didn't need this at all, which is great. I thought we might need it, but in the end, we did not. And from here on out, we want to buy some from the chop shop. But we already bought stuff, too. Oh, the ministry's bulwark, even in the face of the worst adv adversaries. Adversities. The patriarch stands tall, watching above the rest, watching on, on towards the horizon and the victory that lies beyond it. What choice do the men have but to fight on after witnessing such convictions? Oh, then kneels reserve. Our people are well aware that we fight in the name of the Lord, and they know what's on the line if we falter. Uh, they may have never handled a rifle, and yet their heart uh, beats as strong as those those who have known nothing but war in their entire lives. Okay, the raiding of Saint Leonard's Church. Oh, we have more here. Nice. Policy of rapid industrialization. Oh, it looks like this focus tree is actually not done, and I think that's actually quite correct. Um, they, I think the devs, I could be wrong about this, might add more content to this. Um, in the end, yeah, I think there, there's there's a lot of empty focuses, or the tree's not fully done yet. So, rapid uh, oh, introduction of economic planning. Eyes in the sky. Now, what do we have here? Shutting down the gulags. The last promise, bread. The proper comms integration. Amy's boon. Five year fruits. And find you all. Ooh, research slot. Ooh. That looks pretty good. But we'll go with this one. As the dust settles, we alone stand at the center of Victorious. Is anyone surprised? It was, after all, foretold. I do want to get another research slot somewhere here. With the majority of the CPS former citizens backing down, we can finally have peace after so long. Greatly boosting compliance and lands, of course. Uh, Heroes of the CPF War. Nice. Successor. Intermediate air attack would be nice. I think last time we did say we'd go with this one, combined arms, because we are vehicles. Combine conventional motorized warfare. Nice. As much as I want special forces, I always use special forces. Always, 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 always. And that's actually pretty good stats for special uh, special forces. And that's even better too. But still. Anti-tank dogs. Oh, God. Wow. Way more soft attack. A lot more piercing. Less reliability, though. It's intermediate support infantry attack. That's not bad. Um... Daily army XP would be nice. Don't get me wrong. No, we're not going to get pushed around. Ooh, common weaponry. Very nice. 
Yeah, we definitely need another research slot, too. Hey, we get that one. Kalashnikov. Love it. Nothing there we can do yet. This is a weird way of us trying to figure out everything here. It's very odd. Um, I guess the Great Stampede we might go to war with? Maybe? Maybe not? I don't know. 1.2 ain't, ain't too bad, though. Van Graaffs. Chop, chop. Boop. We need 45 opinion, which is pretty bad. Current opinion is 26, which is not too bad. Hopefully we get another research slot. Commune raids. Well, we can't do that one, which is fine. Um, I did read this one earlier, and I do want a soldier's prayers. Many of the military have grown accustomed to the prayer books provided to them. Consider them a comfort and a source of peace. With a few revisions and alterations to emphasize socialist doctrine, a man will remain calm and steadfast in the face of any danger. That'd be great. Now we got more than enough resources to... Whose land? Nice. Uh, what else we got here? G State Frontier. Well, because this is, we can do this on both sides. Um, I want to do those that are loyal towards a spear. Both of them. Even though if you do this one, you can also do Friend of the Clergy. It gives you more political power, but it's not that much, in all honesty. Stuck in our ways. Uh, just Fire Wiggles Times. Eh, we don't need that for now. Yeah, so we're gonna do both these people. So I guess we'll grab you first. Medical power and stability sounds good to me. Uh, learning from the past, there's no need to reinvest, reinvent the wheel, or in this case, reinvent centuries of military doctrine. Though the world has been changed much by nuclear fire, the old ways still carry value for our forces. Understanding the tactics of the past will better allow us to fight for the workers of the world. Union of Canadian Socialist Republics. Heroes for giving the survivors. Which would be good to get cores. I do want to get cores. Yeah, Difficult machines. Field medics would be nice. Improved turrets. Not bad. Well, I guess after that one. Uh, death to the tyrants and traitors. Comrades, will you stand against those who threaten the revolution? Who threaten our paradise and the way of life? Comrades, you will stand with me. Will you stand with me? Hurts our maximum traction, which sucks. We have more planning speed, though. One fifty. Hurts our speed, though. I don't like that. I don't like our air speed. Industrial backwater, not ideal. Oh, we also went with this one, M R L O. So I figured that would be best. Uh, different brick. Caps expense goes up, which sucks. But I won't do them anyways. Ah. So, the Red Guards. Uh. Well, let's take a look see. All Women Battalion, 20 combat width versus the tankers. They're not bad. I'll go with this. Updated tankers. There you go. Goodbye. And you know what? We need a new emblem for this. That merch circle sounds good to me. Something unique and different. Go. Success with the CPF. Uh, against, all, all, against all odds, we stand victorious. No longer are we a fringe faction on the precipice of oblivion. We are, by the grace of combat, the last standing heirs of the Canadian People's Front. But we will reject the decadence that grew up the CPF in its final years. Instead, we shall inherit a different mantle, that of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, so that we may carry forth the legacy of our forefathers. We 
got a lot of money. New citizen's care package? We get this one too. Let's get that manpower. Because we need these. Um, learning from the past. Yeah, we're going to learn from the past next. And the long range communication would be nice. Tales of the sky, intermediate. We don't even get basic. We get straight to intermediate. Well, maybe we have it. Air manpower requirement, minus 27%. Huh? All right. Oh, we can just go ahead and do it. Okay. Well, there are many people. Oh, or, there are many in the enemy's fold who have fought on our side, given the chance, even now. Our men are scurrying from Redmond, shouting out for distant cousins and relatives lost in our chaotic escape so many years ago. They shall be welcomed back with open arms. Sounds good to me. 0.3 a day? That's not bad. The heroes of Canada. Uh, the revolution knows no end, but that does not mean it does not offer any respite. Let's take a moment to celebrate our successes, comrades. May the heroes who led us to victory forever live on in the hearts and minds of the proletariat. Yeah. That's conventional, though. That's just land doctrine. This is honestly better to do, but full throttle. I'm going to max out everything we can here. Um, ghoul recruitment. No means allowed. There's a few caps here and there. That's fine. Our chief of the Air Force. Oh, what is this? Less air attack for airships. Bomber planes. Air manpower requirement, making Gagarin proud. The head chief of the, what Lloyd calls its Air Force, Constantine is a descendant of the original Soviet pilots that were sent to instruct our resistance fighters how to properly operate an aircraft. Well, into their teachings, Constantine continues to teach the younger generations about how to operate what remains. Ooh, put them in their place. Um, uh, of the Air Force, whether it's through demonstrations or throwing the book of an inspiring pilot. Well, that's apathetic, so I guess we'll choose you anyways. Man, you already hit, hit 100? Holy crap, that's insane. Or turn to Redmond. It'll take some time to rid Redmond of the stench of the Amy Terrace and her supporters, but it'll be worth it. For the children of the heroes who led a pilgrimage to Lloydminster will finally be allowed to frolic through the streets of our true home. A toast to our old friends. Battle over dam. Continue shielding. Stability. Nice. Clay working. Full throttle. I really want to do this one so badly, it's not funny. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold ourselves to this one. The Raiding of the St. Lennon's Church. The church that a good patriarch was dragged out of earlier that night was home to trinkets and baubles coated in gold and silver, or dormants secretly carried over from a handful of Soviet advisors still clinging on to old idols and ideas. And selling off this junk will liberate ourselves from the shekels that have held our minds and bodies captive for so long. Yeah, we could use that manpower. Good. We're still getting more, too. Ah, oh, thank God. How much money do we have now? 21. Not much. We still get a 30 a month. A nice uh, communist Canadian flag. I'm honestly not upset with this type of doctrine. Too bad we can't edit it. It's not bad. Um, can we do any more here? Oh, yeah, we can. It's a little ahead of time. What's this one? Rapid industrialization. That's consumer goods, though. Military factory construction speed goes up, though. Socialism. Uh, repurpose the church's resources. The seal foundations and wooden paneling adorning church properties will be dismantled. Use the fuel at boundaries, enabling the emancipation of workers for a good few months. It's not bad. Socialism in one state. The North is a devastated wasteland, with any manufacturing pocket being insecure or isolated from large settlements. Lloyd Minster and surroundings will become the beating heart of a new industrial revolution. If the Soviets could do it, why not us? And then rapid industrialization. If our motherland is to survive the coming storm, we will need to achieve a self-sufficiency in food and weapons production. These new policies of collectivization and modernization may undercut our, our light industry for a time, but are absolutely essential to ensure the survival of the revolution. Hey, military factory construction speed, yeah, plus 20%. We'll get this one done hopefully very quickly. Well, never mind. To show backwater, yeah, it's not good. Outside of volunteers, uh, let's come over here first, too. So, we got a couple things we got gas, gas, gas because we're a vehicle nation. Old school tactics are normal. Do you like my cars? Pretty darn good. I like that. That's actually very good. And Red Army Legacy, this is unique. Both factions, once proud, uh, have left their children to pick up the pieces, and the Red Army will put the dream of 
something. Prosperity back together. It's not bad. And the other unique one is Soviet Outriders. The coal is no obstacle for God's faithful for or or tanks, so let them be harried by Winter's Fury and God's Wrath. And then there's nothing here, so I want to choose these ones, but we don't have to choose them immediately. We can just save our army XP first. This hurts what? Uh, supply consumption. Yeah, that is what it is. Nice. Well, let's take a look-see. Resistance? It, compliance is pretty... Resistance is going down, which is nice. Resistance is still going up a little bit. Eh, I guess do this. Why not? It helps out a little more. Uh, oh! Revitalization of Outer Lloyd Minster. Even before the Great War, much of Lloyd Minster's city outskirts were vacant and empty. This presents an opportunity to equip the settlement or, uh, with a new wave of industry, beginning its transformation into a manufacturing and production hub for the North. Tire profile? Nice. Still a lot of time, which is not good. Can't go down there, which sucks. Um, saws? Sure, I guess. Uh, restore the Freemont Armory. From the powers of Freemont, we once forged the armaments that would help the CPF drive the occupiers back across the border. With the collapse of the front, the furnaces fell silent. With the winds of war blowing once more, Ekaterina seemed it fit to bring the facility back to operational capacity. Reliability, building slots. Yeah, we can use this faster than anything else. And we need them. Nice. Really maximize that out. Well, there's a staff himself, that's fine. Get more science points technically, but that's okay. Uh, another civvy? I don't think we need more water. Yeah, we're good on water. Expanding scavenging crews. The Catherine has approved the expansion of scavenging expeditions. Moving forward, they'll boast the double the armed escorts and supplies, ensuring they can stay on the hunt for the old world goodies left behind by the American occupiers for longer. Ooh, playing catch up first. Whether you production or electricity or armaments, most of our facilities rely on an analog manual approach. If we were to emulate the CPF at the height of its power, we are looking at automating some of these functions. Good. I know we can actually research that stuff. So as you can see, I'm, I'm actually trying to beeline down here to get at least another research slot. And then we do Eyes in the Sky. The North, and presumably the rest of the continent, was wiped away by an unseen, largely unheard thing. Enemy. That enemy may or not still be around, whether the case. Should Hellfire rain down from above once more, we will be ready. Nice. We have a lot to catch up on. Good. Oh, thank God. That helped research speed, too. Now the Jackson MP isn't doing so well. It's nice. And that's right. Command. Speed. Fine. Of course, we are out of tanks. Pretty normal. Support equipment. Spec Ops. Um, how much money do we have? 39. It's not enough. Can we actually improve these guys? Eyes in the sky, proper comms integration, coordination and communication. Both the key to successful lightning strike against the enemy, one which aims to induce as much disruption and intimidation that can be mustered. Whether assembly lines in full working order, every tinker can be equipped with the latest radio technology to ensure his tactic success. Can we increase you? No. Not high enough. Hey, look at that map part though. That's looking pretty good. Oh man, consumer goods is hurting us. Whew. Good, thank God. You know what, just go for this next one. Help the research speed, too. And socialism in one state. If we use infantry, we'll be all these on. Oh, good. Murphy is on a historical, so... Hmm. Chief of the Navy, Navy Bear. Family man and husband of Jill Tenman. Uh, Gregory is one of the few people within Lloyd Minster who have a central concept of naval tactics, studying old books that he found in old libraries of Marwain. Gregory takes what he has learned and tries to apply it to the few crew members that man the ships of the Spears Naval Forces. 
expanding scavenging crews. The Catherine has approved the expansion of scavenging expeditions moving forward. They'll boast the double of... Oh, I read this one. Yeah. What that? Oh, can we... Uh, begin a scavenging program. Well, we need cities to do that, so... And we're a little bit out of cities. Uh, building slots, infrastructure, rebuilding the roads. Is an educated public is a productive public. To this, in turn, cannot occur without the appropriate infrastructure to ensure the exchanges of ideas up and down the nation. I kind of there's not a lot of warfare going on right now. It kind of makes me sad. Pikes Peak Power Station. Pikes Peak sits atop the Saskatchewan estuary, where currents flow fast and the water runs deep. What could be deemed dangerous for an unsupervised child is also a good opportunity for settlement in constant need of rationing electricity. For now, makeshift turbines operate manually and shifts will do. How many do we have left? Four. We'll see. How many more will actually do from that one? Oh, that one. Almost glowing. Uh, major businesses rebuilding the roads. Tolchensky Engineering uh, claimed descent from Ukrainian immigrants who would be fascinating if they knew what Ukraine was. Nevertheless, they'll be gladly installing electrical systems for reasonable prices with only marginally higher than average rates of failure. I'll go with them. Agricultural breakthrough? Well, the clergy are drastically weakened, we can finally fully implement the agricultural doctrines imparted by the Soviet advisors. According to them, much of the old USSR used to be a sterile frozen fields, forcing crop farming to evolve into a discipline and precise art. Much of that still applies to us here, too. And thinner child's, thinner child's bounty. By shifting the manufacturing focus to some of our eastern settlements, we stand to revive this land long left desolate, driving up internal migration in the process. And then what? Uh, further agricultural experiments. By easing travel to and from Thunderchild, we also facilitate the exchange of some of the essential goods the settlement has been starved of for so long, namely water, in the process. We enable more daring agricultural experiments, driving up interest in the town among our settlers, and slowly transforming it into the proper hub for our eastern flank. Nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Dav Sava Dukov. Fantastic advisor. Beautiful. Barely to pay for any of that. This is god awful, though. And then, the Ministry of Infrastructure. As we look to recapture the CPF's dream, we also aim to course correct or appropriate. The lack of attention afforded to internal affairs over the course of the front's eastward push is one such area. By ensuring. The settlements under our banner yet properly connected in service will foster a more solid launch pad through which to bring our breakaway territories back into the fold. Well, if we had to choose one, I like the army reorganization regain. I don't care if the Kimpton's a ruler, which sounds like the one we should choose when we play again someday as Solomon, but almost glowing seems like the way we should really go. So we'll get that one, and then patching uh, radiation leaks. Oh, that probably good. Our field researchers uh, have identified the source of radiation. Oh, look at that. You're going to about a uh, uh, middle mark re grand reopening. Please go ahead. Corrupting some of Thunder Child's crop yields. It would seem some of the cars in the scrapyard that had been fully scrapped after all. Someone will have to pay for that. That settlement, however, will reap the benefits. Oh, so maybe we need to keep our political power so we can actually get. Oh, okay. So early. Industrialization. Interesting. Okay, I didn't realize that. Well, I'm glad to look at that. Because then, introduction of economic planning. We have at last clawed our way out of the rut that held our settlements down for so long. While the little industry we have managed to establish is fragile and insecure, prone to mechanical faults and operational inefficiencies. But it lays the foundation for more disciplined economic planning. The bombs couldn't stop us, the gold couldn't stop us, so why doubt ourselves now? Still get these more tanks, you know. All the hang dogs, nice. So we got more guys, the train and whatnot. Did I? Say no? Okay, we're fine there. Smoke the signals. Nice. And then we can do the last promise: bread, peace, land, and bread. Such was the promise of the founder of the USSR to his people. Well, the Great Father of the Revolution died. Over 300 years ago, the same promises was given to everyone willing to make the pilgrimage to Lloyd Minster with us. At last, with our fields reaping harvest like never before, we can live up to that commitment. Let there be bread. Nice. 
The project's good. Secure range is good. More encryption. Uh, that'll be good. There goes Mount Rushmore. Goodbye, Mount, Ru Mount Rushmore. Uh, did we get political power from that? Oh, we did. 50. Nice. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. So we can only go to an early industrialization, which helps 10% more consumer goods. And a lot of stuff we lose. A lot more trade income. Factory based node income. It's alright. It's worth it. And so this consumer gets more. Hurts more of our military factory production, and the, but gives a better civilian factory construction speed. It's a give and take. Which actually still benefits our guys over there too. Well, let's wait for that. Let's get, finish off all this stuff first. Shutting down the gulags. The communes era re-education efforts were misguided. Loyalty cannot be bought with through oppression or intimidation, and your men will never move forward until you can inspire them to do so. Give them a cause to die for. The chairwoman never learned this lesson, and uh, the monuments to her ignorance will continue to stand for purpose to fuel the dream she could never offer. Last bread, and then the five-year fruits. Under the CPA, the five-year plans used to mean something. Throughout the front's existence, only a handful were ever recorded, each preceding a decade-long boon across the major settlements. Under the commune, these were perverted attempts at making or masking bureaucratic incompetence under veneer of industrial planning. We'll reap what little fruit has been achieved and scrap the rest. I don't want our stability yet. I still believe in the CPF and its roots. Varinka acts as quite the opposite to her compatriot Vera, as she believes in the ability of the spirit to govern the Lord's ministry. Not one sided with the Catholic belief, she takes on an atheistic approach to her ideals. Oh, friend of the clergy. The other one's not a friend of the clergy. There we go. Of course, we don't have manpower too, blood and steel. Eventually, we might go back, if we have enough political power, to go back to steel, not men. Which, does, which is pretty nice. Five year fruits. And now, what do we have here? One does not fight a multi front war for months on end without a solid industrial backbone, at any rate. We'll make better use of it than the commune ever could. Hey. So, where are we at with this? Oh, that's not bad. Growth is not bad. I'd rather hurt growth than our cap, so. 10% growth, that's almost nothing to me. I'm not sure what else to choose here. The eminence of great eminence. Or the shadow of great, on great eminence itself. The shadowy figure within the spirit of Mikhail. As always found in the cloak and dagger push in any situation, whether it's internal or external, as the most effective way possible. Even at the cost of Lloyd Ministry's internal stability, Mikhail will do whatever it takes to root out the problem. Hmm. Battleford, huh? Interesting choice, Battleford. Oh, there, they have anti-tank on them, that's good. Um, demo equipment, no, fire teams, you know what, for now, actually, I don't want to add them on there, hmm, I need more vehicles, not infantry, we need vehicles, vehicles, we could change this, but it costs so much to remove, because we can't get rid of that. We'll leave it as for now. They're attacking us. We'll be better in defense anyways. Amy's boom. Even the black factory stretching on beyond the white expanse, it would appear that the commune had quite a few more in the pipeline left half built on the outskirts of Redmond as the drums of war sounded. Should be a massive week, matter of weeks before we can get these up and running. And then, fine jewel. By combining the commune's achievements, far and few and far between as they may be, with their own, we've grown into something greater than the sum of its individual parts. A true industrial launch pad from which to spread a revolution to the wider north. We'll not rest until we see this dream through. One way or another.
Something happened there. Oh, they got taken over. Well, go figure. We gotta be really ready for safe haven then. Americanda? Oh, Americanada. Interesting. Hey. Nice. Oh, we can't do that one yet. New economic policy law. Oh, we need more factories. Ooh. Oh, that was going to take a while. God dang it. I didn't realize that. Learning from the past. Combine arms. The tanks, the sluggishness, and low mobility are really their only blind spots. The composite of battalions will be paired with more agile vehicles capable of scouting ahead for unforeseen threats. And full throttle. Some of the lighter vehicles will be employed to cover our tank battalion's flank. Dipping in and out of battlefield is needed to minimize losses on all fronts. Tanks of the sky. We have moved to repair the handful of airships lying in the airfields of Lloyd Minster in disrepair. Whilst few in number, they would more than make up for this through the intimidation they instill alone. More importantly, this would lay the groundwork for future projects considering our air capabilities. I really don't want to just want to do the other one, but whatever. We do what we must. You need 45, don't you? Yeah. Eventually, you can buy scrap trucks too. Be nice. Dedicated Medicore. Our military doctrine entails lightning fast action and relentless aggression. We won't get very far without a well equipped and properly trained medical unit trailing us. Fine, go and do that. Extra stability, which I don't like, but still, it is what it is. Bottle caps economy. Sure, get more political power that way. Clelox demise. Goodbye. You know what? I'm not going to increase that. There you go. For now. Uh, we need more than 50 factories. My god. Right. Long range communication. It's important that we remain in contact with the forces on the front line. The dangers oh hello. Uh, of the wasteland make runners and couriers unreliable to maintain communications. The nature of warfare requires constant updates. Reestablishing telecommunications will certainly give us an advantage over the enemies of the workers. Toast of the lost. Well, do we just manually just fight to go to war with other people or what? Oh hello. General freedom. Steam power extraction. We go to war the pass keepers. Not good for the tanks. The hymn of our army. Since time immemorial, marching songs have been a part of our fighting force. While well, in the days of old they sang to keep pace or exclaim their brilliance, our men sing the song of St. Cayucia, who awaits the guardians of the work of earth should they fall in battle. Our soldiers sing and march in unison for the protection of the proletariat in their home. Kinder times. In truth, the ministry has never known peace since its inception, but the winter cold is a way of filling one's memory with heaps of impenetrable snow. By emphasizing an imagined idealized past in our announcements to the workers, we offer a purpose, a goal to strive towards. God knows a man needs one to carry on in these frozen wastes. Well, are these guys busy fighting anybody, or... Can we take them on? Might be taking a middle mark, maybe.
Elected officials, bold attack, strategy know-how. Uh, they were voted in, I guess it counts for something, or this one. All books with knowledge of many battles throughout history. We can put this wisdom to good use concerning enemies. That one sounds like it should do that one instead. I guess we could try it. You don't necessarily have to go to war. Or to go to war with these guys instead. It's a, a shorter front. Honestly, it might be better to go to war with these guys instead. But then if we go to war with these guys, and then want to go to war with America Canada, that increases their border, which isn't good. We'll see. Tank modernization. The tank is a cavalry of the modern world, both now and 200 years ago. If it remains a shield of the workers... Oh, give us a second here. We must adapt the old designs to fit with the changes the Great War brought about. With enough time, our tracks will crush all who oppose the revolution into the dust. Hurts tank production costs, but it makes them better. Our tanks are the shields of the workers, and thus it is necessary that they remain unbroken. Integrating the titanium into the armor panels will stop all but the strongest of weaponry, though it will be increased the cost of the vehicles no noticeably. Improved turrets. It's important that when we fire, our target is destroyed. Rifling our tank barrels will grant us superior accuracy over our enemies, though this will mean that more resources must and time will be granted to the workers constructing them. You know what, since we're going to go to war with these guys in the south anyways, it really help out the defense. Probably have about the penetrative power too. So we've got no one here. Eric Rose, that's the name. Don't wear it out. Uh, descendant of a group of immigrants who emigrated or migrated to Lloyd Minster before the fall. Lloyd the Fourth is the current head of what remains of that family, a charismatic individual. Lloyd the Fourth tries his best to help the people of Lloyd Minster, taking no sides in the divide that has hit his state. Current head of what remains of that family. We choose this person next time. We can choose this person next time too. So. New kind of storm. The turret has been refitted, the chassis has been modernized, and the armor has been upgraded. Our next era of warfare is ready to begin, so let them come. Anyone who dares to the workers of the world will come and find out what a tyrant's end looks like. So we need max of 20. Tanks of the sky. Uh, we have moved to repair the handful of airships lying in the airfields of Lloyd Minster in disrepair. While few in number, they would make more than make up for this through the intim uh, intimidation they instill alone. More importantly, they would lay the groundwork for future projects concerning the, our air capabilities. Hey. Go back to steal, not men. Do you have the army? Yeah. I don't see why we would not do that one. Aircraft? Well, we do have blimps, I guess. Airships? Best blimps? Brother bomb? Well, I guess we'll choose that one then. It looks pretty e even. No, it's ideal. They shall know fear. The captain who dreams of crimson red skies and the whistling of ordnance. Well, we're gonna go this one next. Well, let's see what happens. Let's save. And see if they start attacking us, maybe. Oh yeah, they definitely start attacking us. Uh sure, they're more than welcome. It looks like we're holding out though. It's looking pretty good so far. We've lost 18 versus 161. They've got a couple robots, infantry as well. Very interesting choices. Oh, now they're forcing the attack. Ooh. Help them out here. They're really trying, aren't they? Get over here. Get that tank in there. That armor definitely helps out. Good.
158 versus 500, so I'm not bad. Well, at least we're in some sort of conflict, finally. Oh, come on! Bro, are you serious? Oh, wait, what? They want this territory. There's four people, okay. I'm okay with that. I should not fear. Because of what the demands are. Uh, we're gonna do this. We want more tanks. We still have a lot of cores. Which does concern me. Um, do I just court myself? I guess you know, I, we're just gonna court ourselves then. Seeing as I'm not sure what else to do with their political power. I don't know if we'd get free cores eventually or not. So. Because now if we do get free cores, I'm gonna be a little upset. And then, don't let the dogs out. Some among the brass left the war room looking deeply uncomfortable. The color draining from the paces. Inside, Ekaterina stood alone, flanked by a mongrel brought in for demonstration purposes. The captain bent down to a knee, petting the dog behind the ear, all must be prepared to give their lives for the revolution and raising our standards. As the training intensifies and our tactics become more developed, so too will our equipment have to become more sophisticated to keep up with, the with our ambition. The revolution cannot be exported off of goodwill and praise alone. They just love attacking, don't they? Before we start assaulting them ourselves, yeah. T10s, huh? Can we strike into them? It's not good for that. But they're still attacking us. I mean, that's good. That's very good. Oh, the cycling. Go ahead. How much manpower do they have? They have a little bit left. Keep helping settlements. Oh, they actually beat us there. That's not good. Yeah, we can take all you guys in. Don't let the dogs out. Alright, I want to try this. Can we win here? That's the real question. Help get in across the river. If you have one division attacking robots over a river, what do you expect? Seriously. Go here. Hey, see? Work smarter, not harder. Good. Boom. There we go. Now we're over where our factories needed to be. That took a while, though. Uh. Can I help out here, maybe? Fall well, Nerino, nice. Ooh, that's a lot of divisions there, too. Lost 800 versus 33,000. Not bad, not bad. Raising our standards. New kind of storm. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. We're not winning everywhere. We definitely need more tanks, but still. A lot of green. I love it. Help them help. Maybe you can't do it alone. It's the tanks that give us our advantage. Hey. Good stuff. They should, in theory, capitulate soon. Hey, Calgary. Late industrialization. That's next. Okay, how much more do we need? We cut them off. We destroyed a couple divisions here and there. Keep it up. Okay, he finally got him. Thank God. Beautiful. Sophisticated vehicle tech. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, since we're here, toast to your friends. Yeah. On that cold winter night, Katharina took a moment to reflect on her achievements and those who inspired her to shoot off, shoot for the stars. So we need to save more political power so we can get to here. It's going to hurt our income anyways. But we have a couple different things we can use. Is this fine with me? Build. Oh wait, we ran out of factories. Well, what the heck? Bruh. We should have not gotten a piece then. 
Oh, where are the factories? One, one, one. My god, two. One here, one here, one, none, one. Get down here faster. Fine. There you go. We got to 50. God dang. You know what? We need someone else here too, anyways. It's fine. It's whatever. Go ahead, that's fine. It does seem to last, despite. Uh, ending so long ago, the consequences of the four-way war could still be felt all around Alberta. Cities destroyed, families broken, and soldiers buried. And yet the feeling of victory still brought the people of the people of Alberta much joy. Nowhere could it be more easily displayed than in the capital of Redmond. The fighting there had been fierce, with Strathcombe troopers uh, fighting fiercely to defend their homeland. Eventually they had cracked, but not before the city had been torn to shreds. It had taken numerous weeks, draining much of their resources, but the reconstruction of Redmond had been completed. To celebrate this great achievement, Ekaterina had prepared to give a speech before her people. She stood before the mass amount of people, slightly taken aback, despite how often she would give speeches. Seeing the sheer amount of people that supported her vision for the revolution would always fill her heart with pride, front of fear, this time however, more fear than usual. Silence befell the area she tapped the microphone. She looked at the notes she had prepared, mentally preparing herself. She opened her mouth. Nothing came out. Her eye flashed before her eyes. Thousands of memories uh, rushing through her mind. She closed her eyes, exulting, exhaling slowly. Screw the notes, she muttered. The speech would have to come from her heart. In the key moment, with over a thousand people listening, her thoughts turned to Lydia? Oh, we become paranoid. This may have unintended consequences. To Solomon. Mournful. We were the good ones once. Oh, man. That seems crazier. We will not falter. Well, let me tell you the story. One of incompetence, a fear, of sheer stupidity. I speak of the CPF and the fear that it was. The shattering was inevitable, for they did not know how to truly wield their power. By their own doing, they lost everything they had achieved. Katharina screamed to the crowd, all of them taken aback by her sudden rage. When we walked into the CPF, they called us traitors. They say we committed treason. How wrong they were. For it is so wrong to leave a broken vehicle along the road, to flee from something that damages more than it provides. And we found the dying town of Lloydminster, and they welcomed us with open arms as we provided them with protection. Could we be classified as villains? No. We're the heroes of the story. Together, we brought peace and security to Alberta, Ekaterina stated. As the victors of this conflict, it has fallen to us to pick up the pieces and to ensure that this never happens again. There are fiends around within us who uh, seek to decimate everything we fought for. We must ensure total eradication of them. But we cannot be safe until we have done so. Every villain, every tyrant, and every monster shall be destroyed by us, no matter the consequences. And any less, then we have failed. Ekaterina finished, panting slightly. The response was mixed, with some cheering, but most responding with uneasy silence. Oh, Daily Kapatsko is a cult of personality, better mobilization speed. Complete the focus, the race against time. Many advisors are extremely unhappy with the Katharina's decisions, and as such, they'll be leaving. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, there's more? Ooh. I did not know this. Outside of the tank at core, doubts over Katharina's vision linger. Among the old timers, especially, memories of the CPS shattering remains fresh. If the captain is to succeed, she will need to prove herself more competent than the pretenders who came before and fast. Okay, so this is interesting. So you have the other route with Solomon, but... Dis dispute for the great territories, former core territories. Add a unification campaign. Ooh, we lose weekly manpower, weekly stability, and weekly balance of power changes. Set to point three on the capturing code. Oh. Ruthless crackdowns. Covert assassinations. Disappearing acts. Desperate bargaining. We need more manpower. Scum of the Earth. Voice of the People. Cashing Out. The Final Purchase. I'll get a core. The Sly Fox. Soap and Water. Ghost of What Once Was. Passerbys. Passkeepers. Oh, we do go to the Passkeepers and Safe Haven, of course. Safe Haven Approval. Who are you going to call? Our old enemy. Holy crap. Reckless aggression. Through and through. Paying them back. The last laugh. Manitoba's Pandora's Pinata. Crossing Easterville. Finishing what Lydia started. From the gallows. Beacon in the night. Guess who's back? Even the score. Under our protection. 
Suppose it was merely destiny. Victory such as it was. Well, we definitely chose a different path this time than I expected. Ruthless Crackdowns. What good is a pack of loyalists if you can't have a few fall guys on hand when the pen pushers get rowdy? Get more war out of this one. You lose caps and come on that one, though, which I don't like. Oh, come on. Wait, why did we lose all that? We're mobilizing more. Well, let's wait to do that one, then. Ghost of what once was. I kept thinking I took her place behind the podium. Oh, we even lost our generals. Okay, so we didn't lose that many people, actually. We lost a few people here and there, but still. Pablo Jacob? Holy crap, look at that logistics skill. Definitely the right person for the job here. You're going to be a local leader. And a lead foot. And a light figure. The Fremontanian Bulwark. Cool. Still level 4, 2. Life giver. Local leader. Um, let's leave it, leave it for that one for now. I guess we have to choose this person next. Okay. I guess we'll do Scum of the Earth. I kept throwing waiting for the busy halls to quiet down. Ooh. Demand Rackle Territories. That's a lot of territory. Oh, the captain's office. Currently captain. Katharina. Lost in Manitoba. The Saskatchewan disaster. Is not reading a log. Won't come the march, long march home. What well, lies beyond the great breach? The forgotten vault. Send an expedition. The outcome of the expedition. The loss of Manitoba. Well. The collapse. Of the Canadian People's Front in the early 2100s was well, a chaotic and sudden development, and arguably the bloodiest chapter in the North's history since the Great War. During this time, the CPF was marred by internal conflict and division over the state and future direction of the organization, not helped by its territorial overextension. Uh, the raiders and strongmen polluting the Front's eastern outskirts quickly seasoned this regrettable bureaucratic paralysis. With no reinforcements on the horizon, CPF leadership in Manitoba was swiftly decapitated. Local warlords carving up the area among themselves, the Savier among them, a lowly raider based out of Winnipeg, realized that brute strength alone wouldn't be enough in maintaining hold over the city in the long run. Now the people had seen what a just, functioning nation-state looked like. And so a new fiction had been created, had to create it or be created, one future generations could rally around, as they done with the CPF soon, the warlord of Winnipeg would declare himself King Gun, first of his line, and appeal to a legacy, order, and stability that the locals have been craving for. A stroke of political genius, as much as it pains me to admit it. Eventually, the more disorganized neighboring warlords fell in line. To this day, the kingdom of Manitoba's banner still flutters over the region, a mockery of everything the CPF stood for. Uh, by the ideas we sought to em embed it across the north, a mistake. One I will look to rectify and succeed, where they have failed. Huh. Oh, so we read this one, so that's good. Read. I guess we'll keep reading this one for the next time. Let's see what happens when we demand our rightful territories. No, let's save first. And if it doesn't go well, well, I can always retry it again later. Because we need more territories and whatnot. Do they say yes? Please say yes. Please say yes. Please say yes. Because this is our rightful territory, you know? And they reject our ultimatum then. We need more divisions for this, don't we? Salvage trucks would be nice. Calgary? Rooting out the butchers. They call themselves Wardens of the White. Comrades said to Katharina as she carefully scanned the hall in search of any glint in their eyes of her men that may betray an affiliation. Suppose the defenders of those who cannot defend themselves out here in the north, or at least that's what they say. But I know what they are, butchers, tyrants. They move from settlement to settlement, duping those who don't know best through a thin veneer of competence. But that is all it is, a veneer. Once they dig themselves in, there is no getting them out unless all that surrounds them rots away. She rested her hand on that sidearm. Not without the right amount of firepower, anyway. A lot of chuckle filled the room. Today we drive west. By tomorrow, we'll kick them across the Rockies. Come the following morning, Canada will be free from these parasites. We're ready the engines, we are moving out. Passerbys. Oh, so let's take a look-see before we end this episode. What do we have here? So over here. Oh, actually we're over here. More political power. Let me go hard left. Cult of personality versus voice of the people. We go hard right. We lose a lot of more stability. The people's motion, no confidence, part one. Intimidation tactics. Really war sport game. 
I'm gonna get except you know, 1%, it's not much. Lose political power. Purge the military. Wow. Purge the Air Force. Purge the Navy. Host the military parade. Diplomatic isolation. No add no outsiders. Cover up campaign failures. Huh. Add state press. We have muzzle descent and lock trade. Distress outsiders. They get more political power that way too. Yeah, we're definitely uh feeling it here. It's going down slightly every week. We need more stability too. Huh. Well it's good to know. Maintaining power bounds at all costs. Because right now it's it's shifting to the left, right? No, it's shifting to the right. So positive means you're going to the right. We need to go further to the left. Hmm. Restoring justice. Scum of the earth. It can't wait for the busy halls to quiet down. But I think we'll end it there. We'll see what happens next time. I mean, obviously we're poised to strike. And if we move fast enough, we can definitely encircle quite a few enemies with our tanks. But it looks like they're not going to be super easy to take it out. So, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow. Let's see what else we can do with the good old uh, Union of Canadian Socialist Republics. Thanks for watching. And have a great rest of your day.